Hey guys, welcome to another JavaScript challenge. And in this challenge, we will going to be looking for unique values that are being passed into our function. So we're going to have the function. The name can be anything you would like, but I called my one unique. And then I'm passing in the string. Now, if all the values in a string are going to be unique, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So let's say if we have a, B, C, D, E, all the values are going to be unique. However, if we're going to pass, let's say a, B, A, and then let's say another B, then we're going to be getting a result of false because all the values are not unique. And we're going to do this challenge using the array, using the object. So basically, we're going to do three different ways, as well as we're going to use the string method last index off. Now, we're not going to use the set data structure because I'm going to make a separate video where we're going to do the same challenge using only the set data structure. All right. So now when we know what we're going to do, why don't we start doing it? And first and foremost, I'm just going to use the array. So I'm going to set a variable by the name of values. And this is just going to be an empty array. And now what I can do is I can just set up a for off loop and just loop through the string. And what I would like to test is the index of that particular letter in the values. So how this is going to work, I can say, all right, so for of loop. So obviously we need to say, okay, so letter, and now I'm looping through the string, of course, I'm going to say string. So each and every letter in the string, and I would like to test it using the index of. So I have the actual array. The array does have the method of index of, and I can just say, just test me whether that particular letter is there. And what I can do right now is I can say letter. And then right after I add the letter, I can push it into the array. And that way, the index of what the index of is going to do is index of is going to let me know whether the letter is there or not. So maybe in order to make it a little bit more interesting, we can actually do the console log. So that way, each and every time we're going to be looping through, we will going to uh, console log and we're going to see whether the value is there. And as you can see right now, all of them are negative one. So that means that the letter is there because we obviously haven't pushed anything into the array. However, if I'm going to change this a little bit around and we're going to say, all right, so values and we can use the spread operator. We can use the actual push method. That's really up to you. I'm going to use the spread. I'm going to say values and letter. And now notice something interesting. The first time all the values were negative one. So for the first one, which is obviously a unique one. However, for the second one, you will notice something interesting, where as I'm looping through, I'm getting also a zero. Now, what does that mean? As well as I'm getting later on one. Well, that means that it checks the index of that particular error. And it says, all right, so you're checking right now with A, but the A is already in the array. This is already in the values. So therefore, the index of will be zero as well as if it checks later on the last one that it would be, it says, okay, the B is also already there because notice, obviously, index of one. So that's how we can check it. And now, since we know what we're checking for, we can just set up the if statement where we will going to be checking for that, again, index of. And if the index will going to be equal to negative one, then everything is fine. Otherwise, we're going to say, okay, no, we cannot do that because the value is not unique. So the way we're going to do that is very simple. If then we're going to say values, like I said, we're going to be checking. We're going to say values index off, and we're going to be looking for that particular letter. And we're going to say if this is not equal to a negative one, then we would want to return false. So that way we know that the value is already there. So our whole actual string has to return false because the values are not unique. Otherwise, we're going to return true, but we do need to add the value into the actual array. Otherwise, this is not going to work because all the time this is just going to be a negative one. So I'm going to write, all right, values will be again. Why don't we use the push method this time since we used already the spread operator? And we're just going to say letter. Now let's see what we're going to have. So for the first one, this returns true because all the values were unique. Or the second one is false. And the reason for that is because we don't have all the values that are unique. If I'm going to add here a, 
this also is going to turn false right now because I'm checking and the values are not unique. So that would be using the array. So what I'm going to do right now is hopefully you understand what's happening here with these console logs, because I'm just going to comment this out and we're going to write something, something very, very similar, just using the object. So in this case, we're just going to be checking the property differently. Now, what I can do right now is in order to save a little bit of time, we will going to copy and paste that in fact, and we're going to comment this out and we're going to kind of refactor it using the object. So instead of array, the values will going to be an object. Then we're again doing the same for of loop. But of course, we're not using the array method of index off because now we have, in fact, an object and the way we can use it with an object, we can write. All right. So if and now we have the object of values and that way we can check whether the property is there. And since we know that we can access properties using dot notation and bracket notation, in this case, I can say, OK, if the values object does have this property. So if it does already have the property, I know that the letter will be already on the object, because what I'm going to do later on is for each and every time I'm going to be looping through the string, I will going to be adding this property. Now, that way, I'm going to say return. Now we're going to be returning false. Because again, this is going to signal that the actual string doesn't have all the unique values. But before we go any further, we need to write values. Now, in this case, as you can see, I'm setting up the property of the object. I'm going to say letter and this will be equal to exists. So now my property exists there. So again, we have the same thing where the first one will be true and the second one will going to be false because again, we're repeating the actual uh, unique values. So this would be a way of how we can do it, obviously, with an object where instead of checking for the index, we just check whether that property is there. Now you can write here as a value anything you'd like. You can set this equal to true. You can set this equal to one. It doesn't really matter as long as you add that property with some kind of value onto the object as you're looping through. But before you do that, you just check. OK, so if the property is already an object, then obviously the value will not going to be unique. And that's all we're doing. And the last one was going to be using the last index off that we have on a string. So again, let me just comment this out just so you can have it for your reference. And then let's right now using the last index off. So the way that we were going to do that, we were going to say, all right, so in this case, why don't we set up the normal for for loop? And then we're going to say, let I is equal to zero. Then we're going to say, okay, so we're going to be looping till the end of the string, of course. So we need to use less than length. And then we're going to say I plus plus. That will going to be our for loop. And then within the for loop, again, we're going to set up the if statement. And what we're going to write is we're going to say, okay, so if string index, and that is the property. Now, last index off, we're going to return the last index of that particular item that we're looping through. And you know what? Why don't we just do maybe console log first? That will going to give us a better idea. So why don't we just say here, let it turn true. And then why don't we console log it for each and every time we're going to be looping through? What would be the index? So this way, you probably want to see much better what's happening. So last index off. And now let's pass in the value. So I need string. And then I'm looking for the I. So what I'm saying here is, all right, so give me the last index of the item that we looping through. And then obviously this is going to be checked with the string. So that way I can see, OK, so this is going to be zero, one, two, three, four. So that would be obviously each and every iteration. And then we're returning at the end of the true. However, if we're looking at the first one right now, we see that last index is going to be two even though this should be obviously zero, right? But since there is already item here by the A, that's the reason why this returns to. And this is how we're going to set it up. So I'm going to say if the last index off is not equal to our current iteration, then we're going to return false. And that's the only thing we're going to do. So again, the same thing, if statement. Now, in this case, since we're going to be looking for, of course, the value, so I can just say, okay, so if that particular last index off is not equal to our current iteration, 
then we're gonna return false. So I'm gonna say, all right, so return and false. And let's see what's gonna happen. And again, the same thing. All the values from the first one are unique. And the second one are obviously not unique. So the return is false because we already have duplicate values. 